I don't think anyone would argue with the principle, would ever argue with the principle that we should protect children from adult content. That's kind of why we call it adult content. So it's a very important thing to do, to achieve. But the propositions in the current version of the Digital Economy Bill, uh, the technical measures which seek to do this, um, are not really fit for purpose. They do not resonate with the way that the internet actually works. The mechanisms which are all proposed uh, pivot upon the idea of age verification. That someone who is visiting an adult website uh, will be redirected to some service and can put in personal information, uh, either linking it to their social media accounts or to their credit card or to their credit agency or some trusted third party who will then respond to the adult site saying, yes, the person who's trying to access this site is over the age of 18. But it's a very weak mechanism. Any teenager who knows uh, their, one of their parents' passwords for a bank or for their credit card or can get a hold of other information like that uh, can replay those credentials, can forge these uh, credentials to prove that they are over 18 and then browse as much porn as they want. If we took a different approach through education, through engagement with the community, through outreach, through organizations like Brook or other charities that seek to uh, educate young people in addressing sexuality in a sensible sort of way, uh, we wouldn't be creating this future nuisance. Frankly, some of the technological measures that are being proposed for age verification not merely are they easily circumventable, but they're even scary. Uh, some of them involve, for instance, linking your Facebook or Twitter or other social media account or even payment accounts like PayPal to some third party with no guarantee over how they will use the data that they collect from you. Others involve performing credit card transactions against a card that you possess. Uh, and although there may actually be zero charge against your account, this still acts as a credit transaction against your card. We are, because of the digital economy bill, going to start building databases of people's access to adult content, to pornography. And the databases are going to be on different uh, age verification providers, small unregulated companies with unclear security practices, whom, if they are hacked, risk having that information shared on sites like WikiLeaks or available to hackers all over the web. What would a tabloid journalist pay in order to get a hold of this sort of data so that they know uh, what the porn preferences are for the whole of Manchester United. This is attractive information with a monetary value and should not be left undefended or haphazardly defended. We've had other stories like this, multiple other stories like this, within the past year. There was the World Anti-Doping Agency database that was stolen. There was the Ashley Madison database, very similar in content to what we're talking about, that was stolen. And I believe three people actually committed suicide over the revelations from that database. Where do we go next? It's not perfect. We've established it's not perfect. The committee says it's not perfect. The only directions which it conceivably go uh, are one, to impose network blocks on internet service providers, legal requirements that some domain or some IP address be taken down from the internet if you are a British ISP user. The other direction is one uh, involving stronger identity of British people using the network. We will wind up with a digital identity card being required to access uh, internet sites in the United Kingdom. Either of these paths uh, lead to uh, restrictions upon growth of uh, new businesses, growth of or adoption of new technologies. It will stagnate the British internet. 